And it is time to do a reading, wrap-up, and reflection for September. Hey everyone, it is Shannon, and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you how my reading went for the month of September. There were lots of books, there were not that many challenges, like I didn't have a theme of the month really, which is a bit strange for me, but... It happened. <laughs> um, and as always, I am going to break the uh, video down into my five sections, which include my stats, my series versus standalone reading, my projects, my TBR monthly reflection, and also favorites and things off with favorites. I will leave jump links down below for you to jump from one to the other. I also figured out how to do chapters. So on the progress bar, you will be able to see which part of the video is for which part of the section. And if you want to learn how to do that, I found a great video and I will leave it linked up above that explains it very well. And I was surprised at how easy it was. And um, I'm trying to remember, I saw someone put chapters in and I was like, oh, I was like, I wonder how you do that. Because sometimes when there's like new features or whatever, um, I never know if they're available for people who have smaller channels or aren't monetized or whatever. But it looks like anyone can do chapters. I can do chapters. So you can probably do chapters too. So anyway, I will leave that linked up above as already mentioned. And I'll also put it down below. So we are going to start things off with the stats. Yeah, there's a lot of books this month. I read a total of 44 titles. I read a total of 700, 400, no, 7,445 pages. My daily page average was 248 pages. My best day was 623 pages. And my lowest day was 26 pages. Um, every rec Every one of those, with the exception of my lowest page count day, is a new record for the year. So that's the most titles I've read in the month. That's the most pages I've read in a month. That is my highest daily average because it's an average. <laughs> um, and my best day at 623 pages is my best day ever. Now I will note that I read a lot of manga and graphic works this month so that definitely did contribute but still even with that it is a lot. I was like, what? I was just like, when I was scrolling, I'm like, this is a lot of titles. It's a lot of titles. So let's break that down by title type or length. I read three comics, three graphic novels, and 14 volumes of manga for a total of 20 visual works. I read three nonfiction titles, four plays, two collections, five novellas, which is a lot, one YA novel, two adult romances, four cozy mysteries, which is another record, um, and three adult novel novels, although they were mostly novellas, um, The Bridges of Madison County, The Diary of a Nobody, and The Outsider. They're all under 150 pages. I'm not sure what makes a novel, like where you go from novella to novel. Um, I'm sure it's based on, page, uh, not page count, but word count, but I I don't know where do you get word count. Anyway, under 150 pages to me does feel like a novella depending on the work. But those are all pretty challenging reads or classics or modern classics. So I kind of consider them novels. Who knows? Anyway, zero kids novels this month, which or in September, which um, I want to change. I like reading kids novels. Um, and I, zero poetry and zero individual short stories. None of that this month. <laughs> the average page length per title was 170 pages. Um, and I had two collections that I read that were not on Goodreads, which is annoying because <laughs> it doesn't match. Now my spreadsheet won't match Goodreads. The shortest title I read this month was Echo Gear Volume 1, written and illustrated by Vincent Sammy. It was 20 pages long. And the longest title I read in the month was This Savage Song by uh, Victoria Schwab at 428 pages. So this is the second or third month running where the longest title was a YA novel, which is interesting. The oldest title, the oldest title I read was Tartuffe the or the Imposter by Molaire, um, which was written in 1664. And the newest is I read two from 2020, which is pretty unusual for me to read in your releases. But I read Sorcerers by Maurice Broadus, as well as All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Um, they were both really good reads. 
as was Tartuffe. <laughs> the most challenging uh, or engaging work that I read this month, I think the most engaging work was So You Want to Talk About Race, or So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijoma Eliu. It was really, really good. Highly, highly recommend it. Made me think a lot. Uh, it's also very clear on how to talk about a lot of different things. Um, and um, then the other one I would put in this category was The Outsider by Albert Camus. I did in a Friday Reads go into this one pretty in depth, I think. Um, and I'm not going to review it because it's not for any of my projects. And now it's been enough time that I've sort of lost a bit of <laughs> off the top of my head. I can't remember all the themes. I didn't put them in my spreadsheet, I imagine. But um, it was definitely a challenging work. Um, oh, yeah, now I'm starting to remember. Um, so yeah, so those are the most engaging or challenging works. That's a new category. Every month they seem to change some of the, like, you know, I think I did sort of, like, most rated, highest rated. I don't know how, how helpful that was. So this month I decided to go with oldest and newest and the most challenging or engaging works. So let me know if those are interesting to hear about as categories, because I can't quite figure out what the best thing to do is there. So anyway. Now on to the genre breakdown. I read one historical work, one science fiction work, one speculative fiction work, one dystopic work, one urban fantasy, that's pretty low for me, um, one superhero work, two adventure works, two that were a variety because they were uh, collections, three classics or modern classics, three Ibsen plays, um, I guess I guess I included these as classics, um, three nonfiction works, three thrillers, four mysteries, they were all cozy mysteries, and 12 dark fantasy. That was all manga. And six romances, which is awesome. That's a lot of romance. One play, one fantasy, one paranormal, one suspense, one Viking, and one LGBT. Is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, six. And one LGBT title. So, yay, romance. The format breakdown came to one audiobook, which is sort of my average. I read six titles on my Kindle, which I'm very happy about. Um, I haven't been reading as much on my Kindle, so it was good to do that. I read 24 on my tablet, which is up. And then for physical editions, I read nine physical editions, two hardcovers, five trades, five, and five paperbacks. Um, no, two hardcovers, two trades, and five paperbacks. And one of those paperbacks was in two volumes, um, which I'll talk about later. Um, which was that was pretty good I think um having I like paperbacks I like paperbacks hardcovers are challenging um one of them was a small hardcover so that wasn't too bad um trade is okay depending on the paper weight but I I am paperbacks are feeling like the way to go so I'm happy that my kindle reading is up and that my physical edition although they're about the same um I am happy that there were a lot of paperbacks and I did not go back to reading any editions on my phone so I guess that was not a format that I liked very much. In terms of ratings, I do ratings out of 10. I read one that I gave 9.5 out of 10, two that I gave 9 out of 10, four that I gave 8.5 out of 10, five that I gave 8 out of 10, six that I gave 7.725 out of 10, 12 that I gave 7.5 out of 10. That is definitely almost always the majority get 7.5 uh, and, and it was this month. Um, four gave 7.25 out of 10. 7 got 7 out of 10, 1 got 6.5 out of 10, 1 got 6 out of 10, and 1 got 4 out of 10, and that was Bridges of Madison County. My average overall was 7.55. That's down a little bit from last month, which was 7.71. Now we're going to look at series versus standalone. Out of the 44 titles I've read, they 28 were from series and 16 were standalone. So that's 74% series and 36% standalone. It's almost exactly the same as last month, which was a 62-37 split. <laughs> I started five new series. I read 15 works that continued series. I didn't catch up on any series this month. I was undecided about one series, the Requiem for the Rose King manga series. Um, it's based on or inspired by maybe Shakespeare plays, and I felt like it took a lot of liberties, so I'm a little like, I'm not sure about this. It's an interesting work, and I like the work. I just was really constantly comparing it back to the Shakespeare plays and going... It's not how I remember it, but I only know one out of the two very well, so I'm undecided about that one. I'm actually unclear about one. I read something that was volume one, but I don't see more, and it's not a super recent work, so that's a little like, 
Um, I did DNF one series, and there's two series that I read from start to finish, both Echo Gear, which is which was three comics, and they're sort of a, a differently formatted, engaging mystery collection of things, including there was a crossword, like it was very uh, different, um, but I read the whole thing. Um, and then I also read the entire Kitty Couture series by Julia Chase, which is Julianne Lindsay, it's a pseudonym. Um, and um, I also, so those I both read start to finish. And then I also finished uh, the manga series Vampire Night. I finished it to volume 19. So now we're going on to projects and challenges. Um, I have 37 different projects and challenges that I track throughout the year. <laughs> and for this month, 22 of the 40, 22 of the 44 titles were for projects and challenges. So that's actually pretty good. Um, and I met 37 different challenges with those 22 titles, and I got 5.1% closer to my overall goal. Although somehow my overall goal seemed to increase from 713 challenges to 728 challenges. I'm not sure how that happened. Currently I'm at 293.3 out of 728. I am not getting going to complete. I am not anticipating completion. I don't care that I'm not even halfway. Some of the challenge I do work towards finishing some of the challenges within the overall challenge and I have completed one and I'm on track for at least three more out of the 37. I it's just, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. I just like tracking things. Anyway, um, but some projects I have made zero progress all year. So I will definitely have to reevaluate that come year end. Okay, now into specific challenges, month specific challenge. One of my challenges is always to read half of the books that I carry over from month to month. And from August, I carried over 28 titles into September. So my goal was to read 14 and I read seven. So only half, not great. My stacking the series um, challenge, I wanted to read eight titles. I read one. So that's even bigger fail. Bad. I did participate in one readathon, which was the Manga Love Readathon, and I had so much fun doing that. The other thing that I was working on this month was I actually did, um, I am trying to again continue to work with um, giving some relief to my hands. So not reading hardcovers definitely works. But one of the things I also noticed was larger books was definitely something that was hard to do. So I am experimenting with splitting books into volumes. So I did do that with this book, Dark Sky by Carla Neggers, which is 375 pages. So I split it into two volumes that are both like 100 and 190 and then, you know, just under that, like about the same, actually 185. This was extremely helpful. The only thing that wasn't very helpful about it was this is a sort of suspense novel, slightly romantic suspense, and I realized after I split it into two volumes complete with end pages, I actually did end pages, <laughs> and then a spacer page, and then glued it to the last one, and then the next one starts at the next chapter. Oops. Well. Oh, it doesn't. I just split it. Oh, you know what? This is a Harlequin. So they had a card, like a sign away, like a send away card in the middle. So that's that's where I chose to split it. Anyway, but I did also do end pages because it's called Dark Sky. So that felt like a good one. Anyway, but then I realized after I split it into two that I had to read the book to see, did it work? Like, did it actually, was it easier to read? And it was so much easier to read. Oh my goodness gracious. So I think this is going to be the way I go for anything that's over 300 pages long. Um, and I'm now currently testing a trade paperback with the same idea. Um, and again, I picked something that is not something I would normally read. Like, this is something I got at a book sale for like, 33 cents like three for a dollar so um but I did actually enjoy it it was a bit intense it's not quite it's a little more suspensey than I'm quite used to um but it made it so much easier to read when the volume was only 180 pages so I definitely am going to continue to work with that so that was a success. Um, it is a fair amount of work to do that and I probably will do a video about it if people are interested um, in how to split it into two volumes. I'm still experimenting myself um, but I'm gonna work on reading the trade paperback to see if that um, also 
feels the same way. So we shall see. Um, so yeah, so that's something there. And then looking back at my TBR as a whole, I didn't have a theme of the month, so there's nothing really to reflect on there. Um, but I did read 20 out of the 30 books on my TBR, and I started an additional two books. I usually only make it to about half of my TBR, so that's an increase, which we're counting as a success. Um, and yeah, now we're on to favorites. Wow, we're really motoring this month. Okay, so these are books that had an 8.5 or higher in my rating. Um, and we have six titles plus one reread. So first up, we have Age of Reptiles Omnibus. This is the Ricardo Delgado. This is a graphic novel. I picked it for um, I needed... I'm doing my A to Z graphic novel challenge. I needed a title for A, so Age of Reptiles. It is a wordless comic about dinosaurs. It was really, really good. There's lots of chase sequences, lots of reaction shots, lots of dinosaurs, lots of dinosaurs eating other dinosaurs. So there is that. Um, I really enjoyed it. This is the one I'm confused about whether there's more because it says volume one, but I couldn't find the next volume. I haven't looked too hard into it, but you know, that is work for another day. But I loved it, so there's that. Next up, we go to This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. This I buddy read with Izzy, Punk Rock Girl PA, um, and it was a lot of fun. It was very different than I expected. I don't know if I would say it was fun, actually. It was quite intense. It's more dystopic, uh, post-apocalyptic than urban fantasy than I thought um, and I'm really curious to see where the, st the story goes. We are reading our Dark to Wet in October. The live show is on the 19th on Izzy's channel um, and I'm really looking forward to continuing this and it is only a duology so it'll be nice to complete a series as well. Uh, then we have, I'm going to also include Vampire Night. I'm putting volume 19, but just also just because I finished the series as a whole. I did finish this by, uh, during the Manga Love Readathon, um, and I did really like the final volume. There are definitely some places it go. It went that over the series that I wasn't a huge fan of, and there were some things that I found a bit confusing, but I thought the finale was was worth it, um, and I was really super happy to finish the series. Uh, next up, we also have All Boys Aren't Blue uh, by George M. Johnson. This is a memoir by a black queer man, and it was really, really wonderful, powerful. Wonderful is not necessarily, it was a challenging work. It actually, he calls it a, a YA work, like he wants, it sounds like that is the target audience, which I actually wasn't sure if that was um and well I guess I didn't think about it till he said it but it has a lot of coming of age stuff coming into one's own dealing with um you know coming um dealing with uh people not accepting you dealing with um the challenges that comes from being black and queer and I thought it was I just, I really appreciated it. I thought it was excellent. I listened to it on audiobook um, and I would recommend it. It is read by the author. Um, and so that was on my list. Um, and then we also have kind of a different vibe. <laughs> this is all over the place with my favorites this month. Adventure Time Volume 1. This is a, com a graphic novel. I loved it so much. It was so fun and so joyous and playful and adventure spirited. And I am definitely continuing the series. It was a blast. It was an absolute blast. Um, also, um, So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijoma Aleu. Uh, this uh, highly and widely recommended. Everyone should read this. Like, I really just think everyone should read this. Everyone would get something from this. I know I got a lot from it, and I will most likely reread it as well. So highly recommend that. This is nonfiction. I forgot to say that. This is nonfiction. And my favorite favorite was nonfiction. It is also a reread. Often my rereads end up being, I don't know if I just rated stuff more generously when like I first time rated things. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, and that is The Twilight Director's Notebook by Catherine Hardwick. And so this is a movie tie-in with like concept art and photos from making the movie. And I love this kind of work. I absolutely love this kind of work. So it was my favorite favorite. It's about movies. It's about Twilight. It's from the director. It's from Catherine Hardwick. Like, it's just, it was my favorite. So there we go. That might be my shortest reflection ever. <laughs> Let me know, how did your September go? Mine actually seemed to go pretty well. I read so much. A lot of, there was a lot of manga. So the, that, the 44, though, I don't think I'm ever 
I don't think I'll ever read more than that in a month. So, and, and I,